While the skies of Nevada and the mysteries they seem to convey continue to mesmerize us and garner a lot of the attention, one would be mistaken to forget about the fascinations and historical accounts that can be found on the grounds of the Silver State. Whether in the humidity of Lake Tahoe and the lush greenery that surrounds it, or the dry, desolate swaths of desert found here in Pahrump and Nye County, there seems to be no shortage of entities and creatures that stalk the land we call home. In this video, I will be using a few online references as well as the fantastic book by David Weatherly, Silver State Monsters, which I highly encourage you to pick up. The desert is quiet. Take it from me. You don't have to go too far outside of Las Vegas to find this quiet. Pahrump is located 62 miles from the famous Sin City and is separated by a range of mountains that includes Mount Charleston. The roads that lead to Vegas through Pahrump connect it to Death Valley and the Amargosa Valley Range. Break down somewhere in the curves of the roads tucked away in these valleys and you might be hard pressed to find any reception, human or cellular. What you might find, though, is an encounter with a creature or entity that we now call cryptids, but was once known as gods and devils to those who encountered them. Here are a few cryptids that I have found in my research, and have included some artistic interpretations of them as well. These are the ones that keep my eyes open even wider in the night as I traverse the desert. The Jarbage Monster The Shoshone are the indigenous people to much of the land in the Silver State and the deserts surrounding. So their history and the stories told are of course directly linked to the history of the land. The Jarbage Canyon and Wilderness are one of the most remote spots in America and one of the first protected wilderness areas in Nevada. Located 100 miles north of Elko, it rests comfortably in the cold northern Nevada wilderness. Comprised of more than 113,000 acres of beautiful terrain, it is the home of many animals and terrains that vary from cold deserts to alpine forests. Interesting tree carvings still exist left by Bosque sheep herders. And it is here in the Jarbage wilderness that a mythical creature allegedly stalked and killed the indigenous people of the land. And it is from this very same creature that the area gets its name. Jarbridge is a rather unfortunate anglicization of the Shoshone language, which has been documented as sounding like Tahobits or Yahabit. Regardless, the word Jarbidge translates from the Shoshone word meaning monster that lurks in the canyon, or weird beastly creature. According to local legend, Shoshone warriors chase this creature into a cave that is located in the current Jarbage Canyon and trapped it inside with rocks and boulders. It is in this same canyon that the gold rush of the early 1900s brought early American pioneers to the area in the first place. In Legends of Spirit Cave by Dennis Cassinelli, the author relates the legend of the Shoshone and their struggle with the giant as such. Tahabits was huge. In one step, he could climb a mountain. No one was safe. On his broad back, the giant carried a basket in which he filled our hunters for his own feast. Whenever he became hungry, the giant would pull out one of the men and eat them. From his great height, Tahabits would spy on lone wanderers and swoop down upon them before they could flee. Tahabits would stuff them in his basket and then disappear into a crater named Mount Ichabod, where he made his home. Though in this version, the tribe's original land described is what is now southwestern Idaho. The Jarbage in this instance is named after the Jarbage River in Idaho, alluding to the fact that this may be a species found throughout North America, and not just Nevada. The Tobbets Giant was well known among local tribes here in Nevada as well to be a cannibalistic, man-eating giant who would capture local Shoshone, pile them into a basket, and carry them away to be eaten alive. Which, for some reason, the basket part, for me, is especially disturbing. The fact that it has intelligence to at least use a tool, let alone weave or build its own basket, is, well... It makes it seem like its diet is more of a choice. 
An epic battle between the Shoshone and the Tobit's giant ensued, and they were finally able to trap the giant in the canyon, where some say it still may even lurk today. Cannibal and even stone giants are a common folklore found across the Americas and even the entire world. The soldiers posted in the Middle East also described cannibalistic red-haired giants during their deployment, which would provide similar environment to that of our southern Nevada desert. In David Weatherly's book, he describes a modern encounter with the garbage monster, one that was published in May of 2015 to a Nevada Sasquatch Hunters website. Mike C., a resident of Reno, hunted in the garbage area many times. But this specific time, the mountains were hit with an unusual amount of rain and thunderstorms. He goes on to describe a harrowing account of seeing the monster apparently stalk or even hunt them throughout the night. He uses the term Sasquatch to describe the monster, which is a fair description of the giant as well. One description is as such. Right when I was about to open the door, lightning flashed, and six to seven yards in front of me was the silhouetted figure of an upright, standing, two-legged, hairy man with a slight conical shape to the head. It appeared that it was going from right to left and not directly facing me, and then it went black, and eerie thunder crackled. Mike C.'s account can still be found on the website nevadasasquatch.blogspot.com, and it's worth a read. The remote and beautiful location of the garbage wilderness in northern Nevada will always carry the strange aura of its namesake throughout history. Even as human interaction becomes more and more rare, perhaps the giant can find some peace. That is, if it can somehow change its diet. Water Babies of Pyramid Lake Pyramid Lake is near Reno, Nevada. It is a geographic sink of the basin of the Truckee River, which is fed by the outflow of Lake Tahoe. It is also the biggest remnant of Lake Lahontan, which is the name for the colossal inland sea that once covered most of Nevada. Approximately 15 miles long and 11 miles wide, it covers as much land as the garbage wilderness at 112 acres and is entirely enclosed by the Pyramid Lake Paiute Tribe Reservation. It is in these waters and with these indigenous people that we find a hotbed of paranormal activity and several mythical cryptids. Now imagine yourself in the middle of this lake, completely alone. You hear distinct cries of an infant. Perhaps you even hear splashing. What's your first reaction? Probably worried for the sake of the baby. Why is it out in the water? What do you do? Well, your heroic impulses in this instant could lead to an untimely watery demise. At the hand of what, you might be wondering? Well, it could be at the tiny hands or claws of a water baby. So what are water babies? Apart from sounding like a children's show and apparently being an obscure Miles Davis album, Water babies are a very serious mythical creature from various tribes and schools of Native American folklore. Usually associated with Paiute and Shoshone tribes, water babies are said to inhabit springs, ponds, and other small bodies of water. Though the most well-known location they reside is by far Pyramid Lake. Urban legends about fishermen disappearing in the depths of the water of Pyramid Lake have been attributed to those entities as well. Some even say you can hear the cries of the invisible baby or the laughter of ghostly children on foggy days out on the lake. Differing descriptions of water babies exist, and they vary from aquatic cherubs to mermaid-like creatures, even being compared to a more reptilian-like facade. The commonality between the descriptions is their small childlike appearance and ability to at least mimic the cries of a human infant. In many tribal traditions, these cries represent a terrible omen of death or disaster, and responding to the cry of a water baby is a surefire way to invite catastrophe into one's life. Local modern legends say that native tribes would weed out the weak and unhealthy by throwing deformed or sickly babies into Pyramid Lake, much like it is said that Spartans would do the same. 
Thus, it is the angered and bittered spirits of the babies that haunt the lake and drag the victims to the bottom to exact their revenge. These modern interpretations of water babies being some sort of aquatic creature is similar to folklore in other countries as well. The Japanese kappa is generally depicted as human-like beings with webbed hands and feet that assaults their victims in the water. The Yakaruna, a being described by the indigenous people of the Amazon, is also similar in that they appear very similar to humans, at least at first, and use this to lure their victims into the water. But the water baby is a unique creature in that it seems to be born out of the trauma of infanticide and possibly born out of the guilt found there within. David Weatherly quotes a Paiute elder in his chapter on Pyramid Lake. Sometimes at night, you can hear the cries of the water babies coming from the lake, up from the water, especially in the springtime. Long sounds. Makes you feel sad and afraid at the same time. Bad omen. Bad omen to hear a water baby. Bad omen to see a water baby, too. Some of the old ones say, you see a water baby, you're going to die. Weatherly also relates an oral tale of the Paiute version of the origin of the water baby. The story is that of a young man who traveled to California with other members of the tribe. While spending time on the coast, the young man fell in love with a strange woman and was determined to marry her, so he took her back to his home near Pyramid Lake. Things didn't go so well when the couple reached the man's homeland. Tribal elders rejected the woman, citing her unusual nature. They forbid the marriage and told the young man to carry the woman back to the ocean so she could return from where she came from. Outraged, the woman placed a curse on the tribe that all who lived in the area would forever experience hardship and misfortune. From this root source, the legend of the water babies apparently rose. The Paiutes are not the only tribe in Nevada with legends of water babies. The Washoe tribe have long believed water babies inhabit all bodies of water. According to their legends, the creatures have special powers that can cause sickness and even death. Whether or not water babies are a physical, possibly reptile creature, or a vengeful spirit entity, they are definitely representative of the horrors and dangers that can be found in bodies of water, even one as beautiful as Pyramid Lake. So that's just a few cryptids that call the land of Nevada home. One found in the depths of the waters of a lake, and another found in the mountains of the very same region. As you may have noticed, this is a new series and endeavor for the channel, one I hope I can find your support in. We'll have more cryptid videos, some on local history, some on UFOs, and some on paranormal stuff as well. If you have any ideas for future videos, please post them in the comments or send us an email. Perhaps you have a ghost or paranormal story of your own. Please like and subscribe to help support us, and there are links in the description for our social media stuff. Until next time, home still means Nevada to me.